Today, you may think orcas or great white sharks are the apex predators beneath the waves. But once there was something that would make these species look like mere goldfish. We are, of course, referring to Megalodon, the mammoth shark that lived 23 to 3.6 million years ago. It was a formidable predator of its time. Estimations of its immense size vary wildly. Some say they grew up to 18 meters, 60 feet long, and weighed as much as 60 tons. If you were to swim alongside one, not that you'd want to, you would be dwarfed by its pectoral fin alone. And if it opened its colossal jaws, it could swallow you with one gulp, and you wouldn't even touch its sides on the way down. Thankfully, this prehistoric shark doesn't still exist today. Or does it? Surely in the vastness of the great ocean depths, these incredible freaks of nature could still be lurking, undetected, patrolling the darkness. It's an interesting thought. Marine biologists are well aware that there are thousands of undiscovered marine species yet to be found in our seas. The deep oceans are some of the least explored places on Earth. With each new exploration, researchers uncover new and unique species not found anywhere else on Earth. Although most of this novel sea life is at the small end of the spectrum, could there be a giant megalodon hiding in the dark? Some believe that this is possible, but this theory has a certain Loch Ness Monster ring to it. Nobody has even seen it, yet some believe that it is still there. So if the megalodon did still exist, where could it be hiding? The most obvious place is the ocean depths. If it was anywhere near the surface, then somebody would have seen it by now, what with our busy shipping lanes and constant monitoring of the Earth through satellite images, drones, and aircraft. Somebody would have seen a glimpse of a colossal dorsal fin slicing through the surface of the ocean, or the dramatic impact as it torpedoed into an unsuspecting blue whale. But if it were swimming deep below the surface, then it could go undetected, to some degree. The Mariana Trench is 11,000 meters, almost 7 miles deep, and lies beyond the abyssal depths. It is a place that is devoid of light. What little life there is down there is largely microscopic and lives in the slimy, oozy mud on the ocean floor. Other life forms include sea cucumbers that crawl along, playing a vital role in nutrient cycling. Scientists have recorded snailfish at 8,000 meters, but measuring less than a few feet at the most, these were the largest organisms discovered at those depths and under that pressure. So could Megalodon even survive at those depths? Most deep-sea dwelling animals have adaptations for surviving under such an enormous amount of pressure. With the weight of the sea bearing down on them, many have flexible skeletons or no skeletons at all compressible lungs, chemical adaptations to stabilize proteins at that pressure, metabolic adjustments to conserve energy, and specialized swim bladders to maintain buoyancy without being affected by the surrounding pressure. If Megalodon had all of these adaptations, then there is a chance it could withstand the pressure of the deep ocean. But that's not all it would have to worry about down there. Scientists believe that Megalodons prefer warmer waters, Temperatures at the Mariana Trench range from between 1 to 4 degrees C, 34 to 39 degrees Fahrenheit, so it's not thought that they would be suitable for the giant shark. Besides, would there be enough for it to eat down there? If mud-dwelling microorganisms and a few snailfish are all that inhabit the very deepest of the world's oceans, like the Mariana Trench, then this is hardly going to sustain a 60-ton monster predator, let alone an entire population of them. But rise in the water column to about 1,000 to 2,000 meters, 3,000 to 6,000 feet deep, and there are much more inviting things on the menu. The colossal squid is a hunter at these mesopelagic depths, and measuring up to 10 meters would provide some nutrition for the megalodon. But 20 million years ago, megalodon didn't feed in the depths. It had its pick of a diverse array of prey to choose from. From other sharks and sea turtles to its favorite meal, the cetaceans. Dolphins and particularly baleen whales were plentiful during the time of Megalodon. There were more than 20 different species of baleen whales alone, compared to just six today. These came in all different shapes and sizes, with the smaller species being most sought after for the giant prehistoric shark. Except for sperm whales, cetaceans don't dive particularly deep. 
so hunting them would require the Megalodon to come to the surface. It is unlikely that we wouldn't have spotted some sign of it if it was still alive today. Besides an actual sighting of an enormous shark devouring a humpback whale, we would likely see the corpses of whales washed up on shore with massive bites out of them. But what about some of the more remote areas of the ocean, places where ships don't venture, such as nearer the poles? Could Megalodon be swimming in the seas surrounding the Arctic and Antarctic? For one species that is still alive today, that's exactly where it hides out. The rarely spotted Greenland shark is the oldest living vertebrate in the world, reaching 500 years old and spends most of its time in depths around 2,000 meters, 7,200 feet. It avoids human activity only coming to the surface to take unsuspecting seals or whales. Otherwise, it is a mysterious shark and one of the largest species alive today. Some scientists think that whilst the Megalodon preferred warmer waters, when the seas began to cool towards the end of its supposed extinction, the Megalodon was forced into smaller and smaller warmer water pockets. It is thought that this contributed to its demise. However, some say that the temperature proved less of a problem for the giant shark. Although they preferred warmer waters, they were capable of surviving in colder conditions, owing to their mesothermic bodies. They lived in seas that ranged in temperatures from 1 to 33 degrees C, 34 to 91 degrees Fahrenheit. So they can tolerate colder waters. Perhaps the great Megalodon is lurking in the polar waters, keeping its distance from human activity and having adapted its lifestyle to take advantage of different prey found in those waters. Although the deep oceans or the polar seas would be the obvious place for Megalodon to be hiding, there would be more evidence around if these gigantic sharks were still alive today. Not least of all, teeth sightings. Like other sharks, Megalodon shed its teeth and replaced them with new ones. It had 250 serrated teeth in its jaws, spread over five rows. Fossilized Megalodon teeth are relatively common to find. If Megalodon was still alive, then people would be finding fresh teeth washing ashore just like they do with other species of shark teeth today. Not only that, but the fossilized teeth of Megalodon are all dated to between 23 and 3.6 million years ago. There are no more recent fossilized remains of Megalodon. There could be no other explanation for a sudden stop in fossilized teeth other than the species going extinct. One of the contributing factors to Megalodon's demise was the changing climate and the reduction in sea levels. The coastal areas that it had relied upon to hunt dried up along with its prey. Today, the sea levels are still lower than they were when the Megalodon was at its prime, so the conditions still aren't suitable for the great marine predator. Besides, it would be difficult for Megalodon to exist today. Its niche was filled a long time ago. The much smaller and more agile great white shark rose to dominance and thrived where the Megalodon did not. The changing sea temperatures brought change to the massive shark's diet. Many whale species became extinct, and being so enormous was a disadvantage when prey was more scarce. The smaller shark species required fewer calories to stay alive, and were able to find smaller habitats in which to dominate. The demise of the Megalodon, which scientists are certain of, led to many other great species. With such an enormous and formidable predator out of the way, whales were able to evolve and develop. Only after the Megalodon disappeared from the oceans did the blue whale come into existence. They were able to grow to the great lengths they do today without the risk of being eaten. Today's marine ecosystem has evolved without the biggest apex predator around to stop them. When one species falls, another develops. And whilst there might not be any gigantic sharks lurking in the Mariana Trench, there may be other weird and wonderful creatures that humans had yet to lay their eyes on, which, in this day and age, is a remarkable thing. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.